Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Ravnica Allegiance Guild Kit? Guild Kits were a hit the first time around, offering a little bit of something for everyone. Now, with Ravnica Allegiance, Guild Kits have returned, this time for the Gruul, Simic, Azurius, Orzov, and Rakdos Guilds. Built from 100% reprints from throughout Ravnica's history, how well do these compare to the original five in what they have to offer. This video will examine what this product offers for players both new and old, experienced and casual alike. What does it offer in the way of needed reprints and potential financial value? What about cards for collectors or casuals who just want fun gameplay? This video will examine both the various audiences and how well it meets their expectations. So are these kits another hit when it comes to pre-con for everyone or were the first five a fluke of excellence, followed by flailing failure. Let's take a look. Each guild kit contains the following. A premium foil alternate art face card of a legendary creature, which is itself part of a 60 card, 100% reprint deck. A deck that contains special Ravnica guild lands and is comprised of commons, uncommons, rares, and yes, even multiple mythics. Guild kits also contain an enamel guild pin, guild introduction and invitation letter, a guild artwork cardboard box, oh, and a large-sized guild sticker. MSRP is $19.99. Let's start with financial value. The first round of guild kits contained a significant value in terms of needed reprints, and while none of these guild kits contain anything as extraordinary as Privileged Position, a card that was still $25 when it was reprinted in the Selesnya guild kit, there's still a lot of value both in terms of finance and just great function spread throughout all five of these kits. Rakdos, which in my opinion is the best overall deck, brings with it the pleasure of pain with a copy of the mythic Spawn of Mayhem, a nearly $10 card seeing standard play. Right off the bat, when there's a $10 card in a $19.99 product, you are likely in for a good time, as you are with the rest of the 59 reprints as well. Holy moly, this deck has five mythics in it. And while Rakdos's return doesn't carry a high price tag, the various incarnations of Rakdos himself are great for Commander, as is the always in demand Utvara Helkite. Master of Cruelties is $7.99, Rakdos Lord of Riots, $3, Rakdos the Defiler is $3.50, while the Helkite and Dreadbore are three bucks each, and there's a lot of other nice little cards in here that see play in Commander. Overall, if you were to buy all the singles, the total value would be $43. And for your reference, the value of that Selesnya kit at time of launch was $45. Again, not bad for a $19.99 product. But if we are talking money, we best move on to the Orzov Syndicate, who have brought us, or perhaps bought us, quite a collector's piece with an alternate art Tesa Orzov Scion as the face card. The original Tesa had crawled up to being an $11 card, and since she's an extremely popular commander, one of my personal favorites in fact, having cool foil alternate art might make this an extreme collector's piece in years to come. Again, when the face card is worth half the cost of the deck. And again, it's a deck that contains cards like Debtor's Nell, $8.90, as well as a very welcome reprint of Orzov Pontiff, $5, and boy, I just love those guild symbols, right where the expansion symbol is supposed to be. Smothering Tithe has reached nearly $5, as it's a must-run in nearly any white commander deck, and even Tesa Karlov is included, making for a grand total of $40, or double MSRP. The Simic are splicing together commander goodies, starting with Experiment Crash, a commander combo favorite of mine for $4. I'm bummed this wasn't the face card, or perhaps Momir Vig, but instead we get Zenega Utopian Speaker. Honestly, my first pick for a new legendary would actually be Prime Speaker Vanifar, a now $13 card, whereas Zenega is mere pennies, and that is probably the biggest problem with the financial value of the Simic deck. But nonetheless, the deck does have a much needed Void Slime reprint, a card that was passing $7. Not to mention cool pickups like Progenitor Mimic, a pair of rapid hybridizations, and fun little throw-ins like Experiment 1 
and Gyre Sage. But the total value here is a bit short of the others at $34. Hesperia is another weird choice for the Azurius Face card, as Grand Arbiter Augustus commands a much higher price tag and thus sees a lot more commander play. The Azurius putter around in the middle management with reprints of Pride of the Clouds and Dove Scape, $5 cards each. Sphinx's Revelation, once the horror of Standard, now $4. Render Silent, a particular favorite of mine. Detention Spheres, $2. And a pair of Azurius Signets, which make your Lawmaker kit complete at $3 for the pair. Total value if you were to purchase all of these singles would be about $32. are smashing their way into last place with needed reprints of Bird of Paradise. The once constant standard favorite has not been reprinted in years, and as such, its price has hit nearly $7. Wow. Protean Hulk was once the biggest fear of Commander, but its $4.18 price tag means those fears seem to have abated. The Gruel Kit is indeed the most disappointing, with only Ravager Worm, a $3.49 Mythic, Burning Tree Shaman, and Ulshat Shat. We'll sh 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 shoot, shoot the hate seed. Two bucks as well as a couple of new cards like Cinder Vines and Rhythm of the Wild, which are themselves just under two bucks each. This kit only adds up to $30. It's the least impressive in terms of reprints of the five. Ah, but there's much more value in each of these guild kits. And remember, Talarian Community College's motto, bling it, baby, bling it good. We take that very seriously. Bada bling, bada blang, basic lands. Usually, the basic lands included in a pre-constructed deck such as this are dull fillers worth mere pennies. But as we saw last time, guild kits have had a stroke of genius and offered instead these unique Ravnica-flavored lands that are, quite frankly, absolutely amazing. Simply stunning, extremely excellent. What flavor! Emblazoned with a guild symbol, unique artwork, and unique border, these lands go in any and all Ravnica and themed decks, from Commander to possibly even formats like Modern and Standard. Remember my taste at Commander? She needs these Orzhov Plains and Swamps, just as my precious Experiment Crash deck needs the Simic Islands and Forests. So far, aside from the extremely rare foils of Ravnica Day Weekend Thing, an event that, thanks to absolutely zero promotion, no one heard about, understood, or attended, Guild Kits are really the only source of these lands. Lands, meaning that as a collector's item, the lands might one day pay for the kit itself. Currently going for approximately 40 to 50 cents each, and with each kit having 16 lands at 40 cents each, that's an added 640 in value to the numbers I showed you previously. Now, will these go up in value? Well, we can look back at the previous guild kit lands, and in so doing, see that they're already at 90 cents to $1 each. And it hasn't even been that long. But as I said before, and was proven correct on, I strongly believe those lands will go up in value in time. But wait, there's even more in store. Bling, boom, ba! Foil face cards. The foil face cards are a fantastic collector's item as well. Commander players love to have special and rare versions of cards. None more so than their commander itself, and each of these kits has a foil alternate art legendary. So if you're playing with Tesa, Rakdos, Suspiria, and so on commander, then it's likely you want to pick one of these up to distinguish yourself. Well, not all of these foil face cards are currently going for too much, there is a solid chance at long-term rise in value due to the alternate art. Now, I will concede that this can possibly be negated by the fact that the foils were printed on quite possibly the worst possible paper ever. Here are my foils from mere months ago. They were sleeved the moment I opened them, and I assure you, these were stored in the best possible protection and climate. Look at them! This is a disgrace. This is how foils fail. Not with a bling, but a whimper. Here's a random Oath of Teferi foil from Dominaria, which I just happened to find on my desk the other night. It's been sitting out since Dominaria, unsleeved. What a comparison. Bling-a-ding-ding, -ding, there's pins. Included in each guild kit is a guild pin. Made of enamel and sporting the appropriate guild symbol, these pins are another bit of bling that you'll either want to wear 
and show off or possibly just sell for a couple extra bucks. Once again, I'd like to direct you to my video examining the history of Magic the Gathering pins. These are some of the best. They're basically just a little bit worse than the Pax Guild pins that were offered in a very limited release. They have bright colors, they're strong metal. There's an actual inlay and texture to them. They make for such a superior alternative to those button pins that we got in the Return to Ravnica and Gate Crash pre-release kits. These are nice, and if you're a fan of a guild, you're probably gonna want one. And that's why the pins are currently selling for $5 each and already rising, adding even more value to these guild deck kits. And so when you factor selling the pins, selling the basic lands, selling the singles, selling the foils, there's just so much value in here. And you can say that the MSRP for each of these kits, even the lowly gruel one, is very, very high. Okay, but there's more to these guild kits than just financial value. More to them for staples for modern and commander and even pauper. Yeah, it's got that. More to them than collector's pieces. Yeah, it's got that. More to them than bling. Yeah, it's got that. Fun accessories like pins. Yeah, it's got that too. But you can also, and you're not going to believe this, you can also play Magic the Gathering with these decks. I know, right? Gameplay. The biggest question in regard to gameplay is how well these are balanced not with each other, but with the previous five guild kit decks because of course the goal is to be able to have all 10 and play them against each other. Well, I've learned some amazing news in my own gameplay testing, I've verified it. All 10 guild kits were designed and tested by R&D at the same time. They were sold in two batches of five, but all 10 were made simultaneously and are relatively balanced against one another. As before, these aren't quite perfectly matched in terms of power, but they've each got a fair shot and it's a lot of fun and exciting gameplay nonetheless. And now with 10 guilds to pick from, you can put together and possibly even refine and upgrade a full battle box of all 10 guilds. Yes, at this point we are talking 10 guild kits for $200. Assuming you got and can still get these for MSRP, that's still a lot of money and you may only want to get a couple, make your own dual deck perhaps. And yeah, at that level that you're getting all 10, you're entering into the territory where you can just purchase a starter cube or two. But I really like and have enjoyed the gameplay these kits provide. What I like most about this is that it's like pulling out a Magic the Gathering board game when my friends come by. Friends who may not have maintained a standard or even commander deck, but they know how to play Magic. They played it in the past. They're over for the afternoon. They'd like to just get a game. It's a lot to have that deck for some people. And so I can pull this off the shelf. We can roll a die to randomly select decks or just go with our favorite guilds and we can get some games in over lunch. This is great casual fun, whether you've got two guild kits or all 10. Final conclusion. Financially speaking, Ravnica Guild kits are a great value. And while they are not quite as impressive as the first five kits, they still contain far more than their MSRP and needed reprints, as well as added value in guild lands and guild pins. In terms of function, the decks can be broken down to provide parts for everything from modern to commander to even some popper playables. Collectors have everything from alternate art foil promos, guild lands, to pins and stickers to be interested in. And the decks are also great fun to play against each other, go figure. And this includes playability against the original five as all 10 kits were designed at the same time and with the idea that they would be played against one another. You may find in your own play testing to favor some more than others. You may wish to adjust where you find a few underpowered, but these capture the flavor and the spirit of the guilds and are made up of cards from throughout Ravnica's history, which is eight Magic the Gathering sets at this point. It's a fantastic item and the grade, just because a card like Privileged Position was not reprinted here, does not mean these are not still a solid, excellent value for a huge variety of players and a solid, excellent A.
I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out over at patreon.com by becoming a patron alum of the channel. If you think this channel and these videos has some worth and you are able to do so, please go over to patreon.com and show your support. You're helping keeping Tolarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.